Now for this next part, what we've got to do is work out the probability that a random variable t is greater than 6. And there's several ways that we could go about this. What I've done first of all though is I've just replaced what we had here earlier on as kt. Remember we found that k was 1 50th, so I've replaced this as 1 50th t. And also when I drew the probability density function, the graph of it, this value up here was 10k. So if k is 1 50th, we now end up with 1 -fifth for this value here. Now why I'm saying this is because if we've got to work out the probability that t is greater than 6, the quickest way I think of doing this is by looking at the sketch of the probability density function. This probability is represented then as the area in between 6 and 10, this area here. So we could work out that area simply as the area of the trapezium. Or, as the way I would prefer to do it, would be to look at the area of the whole triangle minus the area of the white triangle in here that you see. Now we know the area of the whole triangle is going to be 1 because that's the area under the graph that goes from 0 to 10 that covers all of our function here. So we know that's going to come to 1. So I just need to say that this is equal to 1 minus the area of this triangle here. So that's going to be 1 minus, and for the area of a triangle it's going to be the base, so that's going to be 6, times the height up here. Now the height, all we've got to do is just put 6 into our function here. 1 50th times 6, 6 over 50 in other words, so that's 6 times 6 fiftieths, that's that height, and we need to divide all of this by 2, or you could say times a half. And if you work this out, you find that you get 0.64. So there's one way of getting that probability. That's the way I would prefer. The other way, or another way, there's another two that spring to mind, but another way, as I say, is to work out the air of the trapezium. And if you did that, let's just do it up here, the probability that t is greater than 6. Well, to work out the area of a trapezium, you've got to do the sum of the parallel sides times the distance apart and halve it. So we'll do half the sum of the parallel sides. Now, when it comes to the parallel sides, this height up here was the height that we had for the triangle, 6 over 50, just by simply putting the 6 for t into here. So you've got 6 fiftieths plus this height up here, well that you can see is one fifth. And so we've got to times this now by the distance between the parallel lines. Well, you can see that that distance is going to be four units, so it's times by four. So that's the air of a trapezium then. And if you work that out, you get the same answer as we've got down here, 0.64. Now the standard way of doing this, when you've got a curve for instance, a non-geometrical shape, is to use integration. And that's the way I'm going to finally do this. And if we're working it out by integration to get this area, then it becomes the integral essentially of our probability density function, f of t, let's just put that in there, with respect to t, going between 6 and 10. So all we need to do then is integrate f of t being 1 50th t. 1 50th t integrated with respect to t going from 6 to 10. And if we do this, we're going to have 1 50th multiplied by t squared over 2. Just put that in brackets. And this is between the limits of 6 and 10. So we've got t squared over 100. I can pull the 100 out actually, 100, and just then substitute 10 in for t squared. So you've got 10 squared. 
then minus, substitute the 6 in for the t there, and you've got minus 6 squared. 100 minus 36 is 64. 64 divided by 100 is 0 0.64. So this is, if you like, the universal way of doing this kind of thing. But, as I say, if you've got a nice geometrical shape, I would certainly use some of the formulas that we know for like areas of triangles or areas of a trapezium. Okay, so I hope that gives you some idea of the different ways that we could go about tackling that particular part of the problem. Okay?